<laughs> I'm doing well. <laughs> so, how's the tour been for you guys? Uh, surprisingly, it's been very good. Yeah, it's been a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, this is our first time ever uh, getting a chance to meet and, well, we've met Phineas before, but never played with them. So, that was a blast, like the first night shows, like, just watching them play every single night has been awesome. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, some of our best friends in the band, the Orphan Poet, we're pumped to have them out with us. It's been crazy, because we started out playing, was like, we're from the same area of Ohio, and uh, just started out playing a bunch of local shows together before we got signed and stuff like that. So it's just, it's been awesome to like, as our uh, careers have uh, gone on, that we continue like touring and playing shows together. So it's cool. It's a lot of fun to have them. And the shows have been great too. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. How much longer do you guys have on this on this tour? Five, five, five. Uh, just one more day actually. Oh, actually uh, today. Yeah, yeah uh, tonight. And then uh, we're playing down in Atlanta tomorrow, or Marietta. Uh, so, and then that's the end of this little headlining run. And then we're doing some more, uh, like, festivals this summer, uh, like a live in Creation East. And then we head out with uh, August Burns Red for a week in July. So, yeah. So this is only two more shows of the 5 by 5 tour. Mm -hmm. So how's the reception been for 5 by 5 It's a great album. Oh, right, guys, thank you. Thank you. Well. thank you. Yeah. Uh, it's been, yeah, it's been really good. Uh, you know, there's always people that are like, eh. <laughs> you know, those are actually our favorite comments to read. Those are yeah. the ones we read out loud in the van. Exactly. Like, if you see that, we're like, oh, you were got a good one. Yeah. Captors was good. Your new record is, <laughs> eh. Yeah. yeah. Yep. But other than, other than the people uh, we not please, for the most part, yeah. <laughs> people really enjoyed it. And yeah. we're really proud of it. So, to be, I mean, not to sound like a jaded musician, but we, we don't care, we didn't care too much about like whether or not people would be like, this is, yeah. really, this is just honestly like what we wanted to write and we're just really, we're really glad and really honored that people enjoy it. So. Mm -hmm. What's the behind five by five? Uh, well, when we were, well, yeah, I guess it was like last summer, Steve and I were talking and uh, he was telling me some ideas that he had for the new album. Uh, about how he wanted to like include some like spoken word slash like uh, like radio broadcast sounding stuff uh, kind of include that into some of the songs so just like going up and we were just talking about how that that theme and just like ideas and stuff around that so I literally was just bored uh, after we loaded in at a show one day just on my on my phone looking up like old radio terms you know like good old Wikipedia and Google yeah. and came across the term five by five and just researched it a little bit and read about it and it's really cool because Essentially, it's uh, like a rating scale that the military uses for like radio frequencies, and it they rate them one to five on a scale, or one to five for clarity and strength. So if a signal is a five by five, it's uh, the loudest and strongest it can be. So it's like another term for uh, it gets used a lot of times for like loud and clear, you know. Yeah. So it's like I hear you five by five, um, and we just uh, apply. It's cool because it ties in obviously like the radio elements but it also uh, ties in kind of like where we choose, uh, wh where we are as a band. We just always uh, want to be loud and clear and very obvious about what our band is uh, centered around and the purpose that our band exists and for that is for uh, spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ to everybody that we come into contact with and just all about our lyrics and stuff. So I felt like it fit the, the band and the, the album and everything kind of well, so it was cool. So what is the most meaningful track for you guys? This album. Uh, well, you, <laughs> could, you pick one and then I'll pick a different one. Oh man, there's no wrong answer. Yeah, no, <laughs> I'm just trying to think. It's it's a that's a deeper question, I guess. But uh, I think my favorite song on the new album would be the Father's Bargain. Yeah. Um, I think after like reading through some comments, it seems like that's one that like really hits home with a lot of people. Um, lyrically, it comes from. What's the guy's name that wrote the John Flavel? John Flavel. It's like an old Puritan. Uh, just it's like a short. It's a short story. It's like a page yeah. long. Uh, it's written in the 1600s, and I got my hands on it like three years ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I read it, it just wrecked me because mm -hmm. uh, it was such a potent way to explain the gospel. Such a short way, and, and the biggest thing is just showing how Christ completely saw the cost of what it would be to go to the cross before he, before he even stepped foot on earth, before he was even born into this world, and he knew what he was doing. 
And uh, to see that, you know, wow, Christ was really knew what he was paying for, and he still went, you know. He knew what the cost was. Uh, so that, uh, that song definitely is a, a band favorite. And mm-hmm. I think another one for me is uh, The Bird and the Snake. Mm-hmm. Uh, both of the songs have one thing in common, it's that they tell stories. And I love, I love telling stories, both musically and lyrically. And The Bird and the Snake, I, th- I feel like, came, came out really well. Uh, it always seems really ambitious, and it's just a story about um, this snake who uh, appeals to this bird and says, hey, uh, if you give me a feather, uh, I'll give you a worm, so you don't have to work for it. You don't have to, you don't have to try hard to get your day's food. And you know, the bird says no, and uh, eventually the snake convinces him to agree to the deal. And because the bird's just tired of working for its food every day, it's just the same thing over and over again. And eventually uh, the bird becomes like uh, weak, and the snake realizes it and says, all right, now I'm going to up the deal. It's now three feathers for one worm. And so the bird's at this point where he's just like, all right, well, I have to. And then again, from he, then the snake again ups it to six, six feathers for one word. And so the bird is just giving away all of his feathers. And he finally is just like, you know what? He's like, I can't do this anymore. And, and the bird says no. Uh, but what he doesn't realize is that he's already given away so many of his feathers. And so the next time the snake comes up to him, the bird tries to fly away and doesn't have enough feathers to fly. And the, bird devou- or the snake devours the bird. Um, and it's just a story about how so often people just give themselves over to sin. Give, um, you know, it's just one feather, just a feather. It's not going to hurt. You know, and you think, I've got, I, 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 you know, I'm going to live a long time. I don't need to worry about giving my life to Christ. I need to worry about the fact that I need my forgiveness. My sin's forgiven. And if you, can, if you continue on in that mentality, you're going to die one day and you're not going to be ready. Uh, and so that's, that's what the song is. Uh, Comes from so. It's really cool. So, where do you guys think you would be if you weren't in what was that the gate? Man, <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> That's why Ben still in most of the game. Because yeah. <laughs> I have no idea what the world I want to do otherwise. Yeah. yeah. So there's because Dylan, our drummer, and I were talking about this on the way he, of the drive here. Just like so you want to do when you grow up it's like I don't know what do you want to do when you grow up I don't know still so I really don't know I I have a business marketing degree uh, so maybe doing something in marketing maybe not <laughs> maybe uh, yeah, there's a whole host of things that I could probably that I could maybe see myself doing but yeah no idea um, well I have my degree in history education yeah. Uh, and I taught high school history before, uh, before I started playing with the band, before we started touring. Uh, I don't know if I would do that though, not because I didn't like it, uh, but uh, I, my passion is to preach the gospel. Uh, I very much so would, uh, I want to preach the gospel in, in these contexts where going to places where our churches are unwilling to go uh, because kids are strange or because they're screaming music. It doesn't have to be anything wrong with music. I would just like to, to preach the gospel where it's needed. Uh, or if that's not what the Lord wants me to do, I'll be a teacher or whatever. I really don't care. I just want to be obedient. So, yeah. When you guys started out, did you guys think that you would get to this point? Touring and out a bunch of uh, I mean, I think it was always like a dream of ours. Yeah. Uh, I remember like specific conversations, like with Steve, where we'd be driving back from a random show, like back to our houses or something like that. It's like we'd be talking about, man, just see if one day we got signed or like on tour and stuff like that, and just like talking about these hypotheticals. But I don't know that either of us really thought that it's like <laughs> that's a real re- reality. Yeah, it was always like it'd be cool if that happened. Yeah, uh, <laughs> but. We were just content doing what we were doing, uh, and to be honest, like kids always ask, like, "What'd you guys do to get signed?" Like, I'm pretty sure if you looked on paper, like what we did, mm-hmm. we did all the wrong things, uh, and uh, we didn't do any of the right things. Yeah. Uh, but out of the pity of in their of their hearts, all yeah. the state contacted us. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think we got the pity signing. Exactly. I think that they have to do that like every ten years. Yeah. They they uh, they have a charity signing. Yeah. They're just like <laughs> we're their these guys need help. Exactly. <laughs> 
Uh, yeah, so we did not expect it at all. Did not expect to be on the second record. We wrote our EP with the thought that our band was done. Yeah. You know, the song like Heralds of the Depths, all those songs. Heralds was about like, that was kind of like written to be like a swan song. Like, mm -hmm. uh, word, like we, we wanted to do this for you. Like, uh, check and see if our intentions were right. Like, the only reason why we wanted to play music was to, to spread your gospel. And if you want us to continue, then you'll do the work, and if not, then here's an EP that we put out for people who, whoever was listening, because we didn't think anybody was. <laughs> we were like, there's got to be somebody listening, even yeah. if it is my mom. Yeah, exactly. It was more so just our friends and family. Yeah. It's like, here, guys. <laughs> Look what we made. <laughs> I have five categories. I'm going to ask you. Just okay. tell me what your favorite is in each one. All right. So, favorite food? Uh, all of them. <laughs> <laughs> no, bread. Yeah, bread, probably. <laughs> Ben loves carbs. I would carbs. man, if I had to go gluten free, I would probably die. <laughs> I would probably die. We were just we just went out to eat and Ben was just eating this yeah. oh, like there's just little pieces of bread and yeah, just, the yeah, rolls, man. <laughs> just popping them in there like a cartoon. Just so good. Yeah. Mine's bread. a little more like nationally specific. I like Italian food. It's uh, my favorite food. Me too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Alright, so favorite sport to watch if you guys watch sports? Football. Football. Yeah, diehard football fan. Yeah. Soccer. World Cup's oh, out, so yeah. yeah. Pumped for that. <laughs> cool. All right. Favorite movies? Star Wars, the original trilogy. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, Star Wars is awesome. All just for the sake of not saying the same thing. Indiana Jones trilogy. Yeah. I love Indiana Jones. They're kind of cut from the same cloth. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, favorite albums? Favorite albums. Woo! Any genre. Yeah. yeah. It's a tough one. Well, here, I, I could give one that is like a collective mm -hmm. we all enjoy. Uh, continue by John Mayer. Yes. That is, the best, that is <laughs> like the best music to drive to. That's yeah. like one of our favorite albums to put on like after we load out from the show. Yeah. Especially a lot of shows where you're just playing with a ton of heavy, like yeah. nothing against yeah. heavy bands, it's but it's like yeah. just an onslaught on your ears like all night Heavy long. local bands, yeah. and then like the house music is, is like heavy music. Yeah, exactly. And then, just like, <laughs> and then you load out, yeah, and you like finally get out to your van and it's quiet in there. Yeah, like, your ears are ringing. You're like, hey, yeah. somebody. Put on some John Mayer. Yeah. And it's just like, <laughs> Oh yes, oh yes. <laughs> so Here, relaxing. let's do some collectives. Uh, uh, ones that we know we like. Uh, Jesus Freak by DC Talk. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a collective favorite. Yeah, just, if we wanted to sing and scream like yep. your 13 year olds. Yeah, <laughs> multiple times Steve and I have put on DC Talk's greatest hits in the yeah. in the van and just sang along with every single word. Ryan K is another like yep. sing along. But yeah. I, wouldn't, I wouldn't put them in favorites. Yeah. Uh, and Cities Burn, yeah. Sun I Loved You at Your Darkest. Great Alice. One of our favorites. Mm -hmm. um, Visu by Thrice. Visu by Thrice is another. Like, yeah. Collection. Basically every album by Thrice. Yeah, but if we had to pick one. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Visu. Um, uh, Behold by uh, My Epic. Yeah. Yeah, and even My Epic's records. Yeah. We're all big fans of. Fantastic. Um, I'm trying to think of other ones. Jimmy Eat World. Yes. We love Jimmy Eat World, Foo Fighters. Yeah. So. Just like some good old, like, just rock and roll music. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There's some, there's some favorites. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's more than the answer. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right. Uh, the last one, video games. Video games? Uh, I don't know. Uh, I am terrible. Steve will confirm this, but I'm terrible at video confirm. games. Yes. <laughs> um, but the only video game that I ever really got into was Super Mario 64. Yeah. Yeah. I it's my I got a Nintendo sixty four like three years after they came out, so after they were like not cool anymore. <laughs> and yeah, I was love playing Yeah, I love playing that game for some reason. It was the only video game I ever got into. And when we recorded Captors, Steve had like an emulator on his computer oh. and I beat the game in like three days. <laughs> we played so a lot cool. of uh, NFL Blitz. Yes. Uh, Super Smash Brothers, yeah. Mario Kart. Just all those like in sixty four games, yeah. Golden Eye. Those, those are great. Yeah, yeah. Those are good classic games. Yep, that's the stuff that like when I was in junior high and like early high school, that's what I was playing. So that's kind of what I go back to. Like these video games nowadays, like on Xbox and everything, yeah. it's just so realistic and complicated. I don't know. What's going yeah, on. I'm the guy that's like playing, trying to play Call of Duty and just <laughs> guns pointed straight in the air, just spinning in circles because yeah. I don't know how to control the joysticks anymore. <laughs> If Nick man. was right here, Nick yeah. would tell you like 10,000 video games yep. that are completely current. Yep. Yeah, we would be like, shh. Yep. <laughs> so. I'll never yeah. forget when we were recording captures, he just played video games all the time. Yeah. And multiple times walking into the lounge where you would sit, be playing, 
I don't know what game it even was, but it was some game where you're just riding a horse for long periods of time, <laughs> and he'd just be sitting there, and I just walk by, and he's just just riding a horse around. He's like leaned over yeah. like this, like <laughs> just focused, so focused so in on just riding this horse <laughs> well, around okay. the, the world or that, whatever it was. That game was oh. Assassin's Creed, yeah, and that game is like one of those games that has like a huge map yeah. or something. Yeah. yeah, and Nick had just explored every <laughs> inch of it, yeah. and he found a painting in some random building. Of a guy that looked just like me. Yeah. <laughs> and I was just like, only oh, you would find this. Yeah. <laughs> because you were on your horse for like 14 hours a day. Yep. He's like, I need to find pictures. Please. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go, Rocket. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, yeah. so, uh, what's your stance on crowdfunding? Crowdfunding? Ooh, Ooh that's a good question. Yeah. yeah. We're getting into good stuff here. Yeah. I like that. <laughs> Ah, uh, Steve, I feel like you have a more articulated stance on this side. Yeah, here's here's some of my issue with crowdfunding is uh, sometimes it's really easy to take advantage of things that are really pumped about music, yeah. um, and that's that's what my concern is sometimes because there's a lot that goes into these things, and, and it's hard to really know wh what they're raising all the money for. You know, because like sometimes I see some of this crowdfunding, you know, like if we hit this goal, that's just like, that could pay a salary for you four yep. guys and record a record. Yep. You know, so it's like, you're basically just saying like, we'll only do this if you give us like a comfortable living. Yep. You know, that, I guess that's where we're just a little bit different. Maybe it's different because we just don't make money. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so. I think it takes a lot of the like self-sacrifice out of it. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Which is, which as well, like... For some guys, they just can't put out a record then if, right. if they don't have that. And I understand that. Yeah. Um, but I, when there's a will, there's a way. And if you really care about your fans and you care about if there's a message you care about giving to people, for us, like we really care about giving the gospel to people, and, uh, and not to make or not to make ourselves look like we're great anything. Just the label pays for our record. Yeah. You know. Uh, so that's a different story. But, um, I mean, we always paid for everything uh, before we got signed, and so like when they're like, you know, somebody else is gonna pay for a record, they're like, yeah, that's <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> gonna pay for it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. so I, I guess that that's kind of my only question with it is some of the bands ask for like, like okay, yeah, and you know they're gonna make money. it because they just they have yeah. that dedicated of a fan base, and so. Mm -hmm. But other times, I think it is a cool thing because it does allow for bands to to do stuff without a label. Mm -hmm. So yeah, there's a fine line between uh, almost taking advantage of your fan base, I think, uh, and also and just rallying together. Yeah, to put exactly. Because yeah. there's definitely multiple multiple bands that have like gotten back together because of Kickstarter and Indiegogo and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. Because of the ability to like, you know, it's like well. If we can raise X amount of dollars, then that we can actually afford to take off work. Because you know, once you get into like post band life and you're in a job, it's like you don't have the a lot, most people don't have the luxury of taking off a month's work to go and it's a threshold tour, that you, you know? cross, and it's like yeah, back exactly, exactly. <laughs> so I completely understand that aspect of it, but it's also tough because sometimes it's bordering on well, we're not going to do anything unless like our every need is met. So. What do you want your fans to take away from the music? We've got touched on it already. Mm -hmm. uh, well, we can start musically. Uh, we are... There's so much that's going on in heavy music that's so like... It's crazy because what got us into heavy music is was so different than... What heavy the, music is. Where, well, even when we started too. Yeah. Uh, because we played... I never, this is my first band I ever played in. Uh, so many guys are fortunate enough to play in bands growing up, and to be honest, I just couldn't get anybody to play in a band with me. <laughs> They're like, that guy's terrible. Um, but, and so, like, I, I think we kind of, like, missed the train as to when, like, we might have fit in a little bit better. Uh, but, um, I don't know, I just want kids to listen to our record at face value and not expect, like, I have this like preconceived notion of what heavy music should sound like, you know, because so many people think it's like um, you have to have the lowest tuning and the slowest breakdowns and the most like uh, offensive mosh call and 
you know, things like that, that it's just like, guys are just copying each other all the time. And obviously we're copying other people too. Everybody is. Every artist is copying somebody else, so nobody's original. Uh, just, Steve said it. Yeah. <laughs> um, but we just want people to, to listen to the, our record and, because to us, there's bands that no one would say is heavy, but I think they, they've got like the heaviest parts in the world because there's good songwriting and so that's what we're trying to do. We just want to like challenge people to like, hey, step outside of you know the norm of what you would think uh, heavy records should sound like and, and uh, consider something else. And, uh, it's not all about breakdowns and, and then like pop sound and choruses. So that's definitely like musically something we want people to take away. And then lyrically is just, again, in our culture, Christianity, Christ, salvation has been painted in a light that is just so wrong. It's just not even close to what the character of Christ, the character of God is. Like there, a lot of people's perspective of what Christianity is, is Westboro Baptist, you know, and it's like, uh, that's not Christianity. The, the reason why they're on the news is because they're crazy, you know. Uh, don't take that as that's that's what Christ looks like. And that's the thing. Is we, want, we want people to actually see the character and nature of Jesus Christ in the songs so that they can see who, Him for who He truly is and then and then see, like, wow, this, this God that I have hated actually has a love for people like me. And so that's what we really want people to see is that God is not who you think he is, even for Christians, because we know that. We have, we have Bible study every day, and that's like one of the big things that we talk about together is like God's love for us is so far beyond our understanding, you know, and you can never say, I get it. Because yeah. once you say you get it, then you actually don't know God. Yeah. That's not the God that I know. If it's something you can, like, oh, I can conceive that, I understand, it, it's palpable then that's not God. He's, he's outside of us. He's something far greater than we can ever imagine. Uh, so, yeah, that's what we want. Right. Well, thank you guys for talking to us. Is there anything else you want to say? Okay. Nope. No, not really. <laughs> I was trying to think of something super funny. <laughs> no, that will never happen. Never, We ever. usually try to do yeah. something like that. It doesn't work. Just crickets. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you guys for watching. Be sure to pick up 5x5. Five five. It's a great album. Yeah.